sin was raised as my conscience fell. A silly little lie. It didn't mean much, but it lingers still in the corners of my mind. Still, you call. You love me anyway. I am the nail in your wrist, but you love. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year to you. I want to invite you to stand with me this morning. We're going to sing Let's Just Praise the Lord. Uh, what a great way to begin the new year together than by praising the one who deserves all our praise. And uh, so we're going to sing this course through a couple of times. Let's just praise the Lord. Sing it out unto the Lord this morning and offer the Lord up a, a sacrifice of praise today as we sing together. Let's sing. Let's just praise the Lord.
this time we're going to do hands, all right? I don't know how many of you, what's today, January 10th, uh, 2021, don't know how many of you had an opportunity yet to raise your hands toward heaven and give the Lord praise. We're going to be talking about that today as we look at Exodus chapter 15 and Revelation chapter 15 and the praises of God's people because of his deliverance. And so if you've been delivered from sin today, can I get an amen? If you've been delivered to salvation today, can I get an amen? amen? And so we have reason to raise our hands today and praise the Lord. So as we sing that today, lift your hands up toward heaven. Praise the Lord with our hands today. Let's sing it together. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise. and our hands to the Lord this morning. Uh, we're going to sing a song that we've done before. It's called Lord Reign in Me. And hopefully this is your uh, New Year's resolution that the Lord would reign in you in all things, that you would give him the utmost supremacy in your life. And so we're going to sing that together this morning. Then we're going to have some prayer and a welcome greeting. But let's sing that together this morning. Lord Reign in Me. Sing out this morning, church. Here we go. Oh. morning. Matter of fact, let's go before the Lord in prayer today and uh, give him praise. Lord, thank you so much for another day. Lord, to come before you and Lord, to worship you. Lord, in this new year as we gather together for the first time in person today, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we have, Lord, to come together in this way. And Lord, we pray that you would just, Father, reveal your presence to us. Lord, show yourself to us. Lord, may we know that you're present. Lord, may we know that you're working within our midst. Lord, we thank you that you're doing things that only you can do. Lord, you are helping in ways that only you can help. But Lord, we call upon you this morning. Lord, we need you. Lord, now more than ever, we need you. And so, Lord, thank you for reigning within us. Lord, giving us the power of the Holy Spirit. And Father, today, Lord, may we worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, may we give you all that we have. May we offer, Lord, these bodies of flesh and, Lord, these hearts that have been redeemed towards you. And so, Lord, we love you and we thank you. We give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. We want to welcome you back to the first in-person gathering of First Baptist Church Kenton in the new year 2021 and so we're glad for those of you that have joined with us today those that are joining online as well uh, if you're a guest with us for the first time or the first time in a while we do ask that you uh, connect with us via our virtual guest card uh, connect with us through the phone number text us this word welcome 
to 224-4422, and you can do that at home as well. That will give us some contact information for you. Let us know that you're joining with us either here in person or online. We'd love to have a record of your visit with us today, and we thank you for joining us, all right? I know I sound like a broken record every week, but if you are a regular attender of First Baptist Church Kenton or you belong to First Baptist Church Kenton, uh, we want you to be in the know when we have different things that we send out, uh, announcements and things like that. We do usually via text or via email. And so we want you to text the word JOIN to that same number I just mentioned a moment ago, 224-4422. And about every week when I announce that, usually there's some people trickling in and doing that. So thank you. Uh, if you hadn't done that yet, please do that today uh, so you don't forget about it. Text the word JOIN to 224-4422. But we're so glad uh, that you're here today, that you're joining with us in worship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I, I've needed this. I've needed to come together uh, with God's people over the last, well, you know, many weeks, uh, but this past week and all that's going on in our country and in our world, uh, we need to be reminded that God still is in control and that God is on the throne and that God desires uh, the worship of his people gathered together. And so thank you for being here this morning. Well, we're going to sing a couple of songs today as we continue. Think about the holiness of God. We're going to be singing Holy Ground with the chorus holy ground and so you'll remember this we did this probably uh, several weeks ago maybe a couple of months ago uh, but there's a couple of holy grounds in our hymn book and uh, we're going to be doing both of those together and so you just follow along with us as we sing uh, to our Lord and Savior this morning. Sing this is holy ground. This is holy ground We're standing on holy ground For the Lord is present And where he is, is holy This is holy ground Oh 
so much for your holiness. Lord, thank you that you are awesome. And uh, Lord, we are not deserving of your presence, but Lord, you are here with us. And so we're thankful for that today. Lord, continue with us, Lord, as we praise your name, as we give you glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Remain standing because I want you to put your hands together on this next song, What a Mighty God We Serve. Amen. Can I get an amen about that? What a Mighty God We Serve. We're going to sing that together. And so y'all put your hands together as we sing, What a Mighty God We Serve. All right? Try to do it in, in uh, rhythm, too, if you can. All right? It'll be good. We'll and try. Yeah, yeah, we'll try. Here we go. What a Mighty God We Serve. What a Mighty God We Serve. What a Mighty God We Serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a Mighty God We Serve. What a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him, heaven and earth adore Him, what a mighty God we serve. All right, give the Lord a big hand clap of praise this morning. Y'all did great, you may be seated this morning. I'm going to have our scripture reading at this time. So if you have your Bibles, actually, I guess I'm going to have to make you stand back up. I'm sorry about that. That was my mistake. But um, Revelation chapter 15, we're going to be reading that together this morning. And so as you turn there, go ahead and stand back up. There you go. Thank you for standing in honor of reading God's Word. Revelation chapter 15 is actually the shortest um, chapter in the book of Revelation. And uh, we're going to be looking at that this morning, as well as Exodus chapter 15, which has a lot of parallels to Revelation chapter 15, believe it or not. We'll be looking at those. But let's open our word, uh, the sword of the Lord, Revelation chapter 15. Then I saw another great and awe-inspiring sign in heaven, seven angels with the seven last plagues, for with them God's wrath will be completed. I also saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who had won the victory over the beast his image and the number of his name were standing on the sea of glass with harps from God. They sang the song of the servant of God's servant Moses and the song of the Lamb. Great and awe-inspiring are your works, Lord God, the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations. Lord, who will not fear and glorify your name? Because you alone are holy. For all the nations will come and worship before you because your righteous acts have been revealed. After this, I looked, and in the heavenly sanctuary, the tabernacle of testimony was open. Out of the sanctuary came the seven angels with the seven plagues, dressed in clean, bright linen, with gold sashes wrapped around their chest. One of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven gold bowls filled with the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. Then the sanctuary was filled with smoke from God's glory and from His power. And no one could enter the sanctuary until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Let's bow our heads together this morning. Brother Greg, will you pray for me this morning, brother? Father God, what an honor it is to come into your presence this morning. God, thank you for and coming and dwelling amongst us through your Holy Spirit. God, we thank you now and 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 offer praises up into you because you are the only one who can be praised. And God, we thank you that you have brought us to a very trying year. And God, as you lead us into this next year, we, we can claim victory before we ever go forward. You're in control, and we still know you're in control. And we claim that right now. God, we're so excited for what you're going to show us this next year. Lord, thank you for loving us enough to, irregardless of our sins and mistakes, you still love us every morning. We wake up, Father, every day and try to spend time with you, Lord. Some of us fail in that. But God, when we come to you, you're there waiting on us. And we thank you for that. 
please, please take this time that we're giving you right now with our worship and, and know that it's for you and for you only. Forgive us where we fail you. In Jesus' name, amen. Seated. Yeah, whoever wants to. Hey, we're going to sing this song. Um, 10 and under, 12 and yeah, under. Old Church Choir. How many of you kids know Old 25 Church Choir? And Anybody wants to come up and sing? Can anyone come Katie, sing with come us? On. I Katie. see his head doing Boy, this. Does that mean know? yes? Anybody? Come on. You want to sing? Come on, Hannah. Oh, Hannah getting stage fright over here. Well, you're either going to sing up here or you're going to sing out there, right? So you're going to have to sing out there for okay. us. We're going to sing Old Church Choir. Y'all, we haven't sang this song in a while. It's been a while since we sang this. So we thought, hey, the new year, first time together. But we need your help singing it because we just practiced it this morning. Yeah, that's right. so, uh, so we're going to need some help to cover up all our mistakes. So if you'll sing along with us, we sure would appreciate this morning as we sing together Old Church Choir. And let's pray for revival. That's what we need uh, in our church. That's what we need in our nation. That's what we need in our lives today. So let's sing together Old Church Choir. Y'all at least smile at us while we're doing this. Right, there we go. We got some smiles coming our way. Here we go. There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Sing with us. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? Song. Once you choose it, you can lose it. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing because I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. That I wander, turn to mountains that I can climb. You are with me, never leave me. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation that is beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing cause I've been there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I don't hear you clapping out there. Listen, if your mouth ain't moving, you gotta be clapping or something. Moving your body. I don't know. You can do some of this, right? Here we go. Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that gospel beat. Cause it's all you'll ever need. All you'll ever need. Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that gospel beat. Cause it's all you'll ever need. All you'll ever need. I've got an old church choir singing. My soul, I've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I've got an old church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing because I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Praise the Lord. Yeah, give the Lord a hand this morning. Y'all going to have to pick up the excitement level just a little bit. I think some of y'all are in the winter solstice. Maybe you've been hibernating like a bear lately, right? Well, praise the Lord for his word. Praise the Lord for being able to praise the Lord. And um, this morning, as we open God's word, uh, we're looking really today at the final exodus, the final crossing over of God's people in the last days. And I know many of us long for that. Matter of fact, it's been a real burden this week for me, and I have to imagine it's been a bit burden for you this week as we've seen things unfolding in our nation, 
as we've th- seen things unfolding in our world, as we still are um, having this battle with COVID-19 and this back and forth, trying to figure out what the best steps are, how do we protect others, how do we love our neighbor, as the Bible instructs us. And it's been a great burden uh, over the last, well, almost a year now since we found out about COVID-19. And really, our nation has been traveling down a road, a path that we all should remiss over, that we all should be uh, humbled over, that our hearts should be breaking over as we see our nation uh, really crumbling because we've taken the Lord out. We have taken God out of our schools. We've taken God out of our nation, out of our government, and for some, even out of our lives. And so as we get ready today, at some point in time, I just felt really compelled today uh, that we would join together. You know, it's been a long time since we've come to this altar. Uh, and I know people may be frightened and you may be worried about coming to the altar or getting close to one another. And if you can't come to the altar today when that time comes, I pray that you'll have a family altar where you're sitting, that you'll gather your family there and have a time of prayer. But those that can gather here at the front uh, with me, I've got a mask somewhere in one of these coat pockets. I'm going to slip it on uh, when that time comes. And you can too if you have one and come forward. You don't have to. Uh, but you can come forward and pray because our, we need to be praying. We need to be on our knees. We need to be as a church family praying together. And I've been longing for that for so long. And so I pray that we'll do that here in just a little bit as we focus on God's word and what God has to say with to us. Well, we took a little time off of Revelation because we came into the season of Thanksgiving and then we turned that season into the season of Advent and then we had Christmas come upon us and now here we are in 2021 and so we've been out of revelation for about five or six weeks now and we're jumping back into revelation chapter 15 and we've seen the why of consummation why the lord has to return why the lord has to bring judgment upon the world we've been reading about that studying about that as it relates to the kingdom of god and one of the reasons that god consummates his coming is to see finally his people redeemed from this earth you know this earth is a fallen place this earth is something that that cannot in itself be redeemed this earth is on a trajectory for destruction because there will be a new heaven and a new earth given to the people of God one of these days and so for us to think well we can save this earth is a misnomer what we need to be concentrating on is saving our friends is saving our family is saving our neighbors taking the gospel message to them allowing them to be the redeemed of the lord and savior jesus christ but the lord is consume is, is consummating his second coming the coming of jesus christ So that we, the people of God, can cross over to our heavenly home where, by the way, sin and death have no place. Can I get an amen this morning from God's people? Listen, sin and death have no place in the final heavenly home that God has promised to us. We begin today by looking back about five or 6,000 years. Anybody in here that old? Anybody? No. Okay, good. We're traveling back about five or 6,000 years to Exodus chapter 15. Imagine with me, if you will, being in captivity for some 400 years. Imagine something happened and they were to come and gather all of us up here in this room today. And we were to be sent over, let's just say, for instance, to the Middle East. Let's say we were gathered up and we were taken over to the Middle East and we were there as slaves to whatever Middle Eastern country it may be. And we're there as slaves and let's say there is a dictator over the government there wherever we go and that dictator also dictates to us what we must do and what we can and cannot do. Can you imagine the feeling that must be or must have been for the people the children of God, the people of Israel, as they found themselves in captivity to the Egyptians. They were living under the dictatorship of Pharaoh, longing to return home to a place where they could worship and a place where they could live freely. Now for us, we think about sin and death. Sin is is rampant in our world today. We contribute to sin. We are all sinners. For all is sin and come short of the glory of God, the Bible says. So don't think, well, that world is just a mess, a bunch of sinners. Well, we're a mess. We're a bunch of sinners as well. The difference is today, I hope that you're saved by the grace of God. 
Hope that you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But we want to be able to worship the Lord and what the people needed, exactly what we need, is a great release, a great salvation. We want to be released from the sin and the death that occurs here on this planet. We want to be released from that one of these days. I, I want to go to heaven. How about you this morning? Anybody want to go to heaven? Amen. I want to go to heaven. I want to be released from sin. I certainly want to be released from the pain of death and all that it brings. What the people needed there in Exodus was the same thing. And Exodus chapter 15 introduces a song sung by the people of God. And I just have to reiterate again. I'm just telling you, and I'm not pointing any fingers. As a matter of fact, maybe I should just look this way. But listen, some of you do not sing, all right? Some of you do not sing unless you're singing in your mind, and, and that's okay, I guess. But somehow, we need to get your singing from your mind into your mouth, amen? Because what we see time after time after time, when, when God delivers people from something, when God delivers people from slavery, when God delivers people from, from a dictator, when God delivers people from sin and shame and into salvation, God's people sing. In Exodus chapter 15, I want to invite you to turn there with me if you will. And I'm going to read the first 18 verses of Revelation chapter 15. The first 18 verses of Revelation chapter 15. Now, Rev I'm sorry, Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15 is about twice as long as Revelation, or maybe even longer uh, as long as Revelation 15. But I want us to read this because imagine what's going on here. The, the Pharaoh has finally decided, okay, I'm going to let your, I'm going to let your people go. He told Moses, I'm going to let your people go. I'm going to let them go. Because all the plagues had come and the, the firstborn males of all the Egyptians, those that were not covered by the blood, the homes that were not covered by the blood, those, those homes saw their firstborn sons die. They saw the firstborn of the cattle die. And all of this terrible plagues that God brought upon the nation of, nation of Egypt so that they would let the people go. And so finally... Pharaoh relents and says, I'm going to let you go. But as he lets them go and they're on their way, they're making their way toward the Red Sea. They're making their way toward the promised land that God had promised to give them. And they're making their way toward that. And guess what they hear in the distance? Faintly coming behind them is the sound of chariots. It's the sound of, of, of soldiers marching toward their way. It's the sound of horses coming their way, bringing death and bringing destruction toward them and they arise they arrive there at the red sea and by the way the red sea is not the reed sea all right there's a difference there's some who say well it was really the reed sea the bible got it wrong and the reed sea is only about you know two or three feet deep all right that's not the reed sea it was the red sea okay it's the red sea and they get to the red sea which is deep and they have no way to cross they have no way to cross, and here comes the Egyptians coming up very quickly behind them. And they're wondering what in the world is going to happen. God has brought them this far, and now they're not sure of what their future may be. Do you ever feel that way? Do you ever feel that way? Do you ever feel like God's brought you to a certain point in your life, and then you just don't know what God's doing next? Boy, that's easy to feel that way in this day and time. It's easy to feel that way in the world in which we live today because we're just not sure. We know, we believe, and I hope you believe, and I hope you'll say amen. I believe that God is in control, amen? I believe that God is on his throne. Can I get an amen this morning? I believe that. But sometimes we wonder, God, what are you going to do? What is going to happen? And so as the people stood there wondering, then the sea began to part, and Moses began to lead the people across the Red Sea. Led the people across the Red Sea, and so the, the Israelites went across on dry land. That's pretty awesome. Went across on dry land, and as they crossed to the other side, they could see the Egyptians still in pursuit. But as the Egyptians began, began to enter into the parting of the Red Sea, the, the sea bottom, the sea floor became muddy once again. And so the Egyptians weren't crossing over on dry land. How many of you ever been stuck in the mud before? Amen. Or been stuck in the snow and ice? They say we might get some snow. Probably not going to be enough to stick anybody anywhere. But you've probably been stuck before. And listen, you know wheels don't turn very well in, in mud and, and slick surfaces. And so that's where they were. And so they were stuck in this quandary of mud. 
And then the sea began to collapse all around them. And it drowned the Egyptians that were pursuing the Israelites. And as the Israelites looked back over, and they're on the other side of the shore, what do you think their thir- first inclination was to do? Well, it should be our first inclination as well. When we look back and see what God has done, what God has accomplished in your life, what God has accomplished in my life, what God is accomplishing all around the world today, we should look at that and we should stop and give God praise. And that's exactly what the people did that day. Look in verse 30 of chapter 14, and then I'm going to read chapter 15. That day, the Lord saved Israel from the power of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. When Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses, verse chapter 15, Then Moses and their Israelites sang this song to the Lord. They said, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. He has thrown the horse and its rider into the sea. The Lord is, the, is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. Verse 3, the Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. He threw Pharaoh's chariots and his army into the sea. The elite of his officers were drowned in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Lord, your right hand is glorious in power. Lord, your right hand shattered the enemy. You overthrew your adversaries by your great majesty. You unleashed your burning wrath. It consumed them like stubble. Verse 8. The waters heaped up at the blast of your nostrils. The currents stood firm like a dam. The watery depths congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My desire will be gratified at their expense. I will draw my sword, my hand will destroy them. But you blew, but you blew your breath, and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Verse 11, Lord, who is like you among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, revered with praises, performing wonders? You stretched out your right hand, and the earth swallowed them. You will lead the people you have redeemed with your faithful love. Well, I love that. You will guide them to your holy dwelling with your strength. When the peoples hear, they will shudder. Anguish will seize the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom will be terrified. Trembling will seize the leaders of Moab. The inhabitants of Canaan will panic and terror and dread will fall on them. They will be still as a stone because of your powerful arm. Until your people pass by, Lord. Until the people whom you purchase pass by. Verse 17. You will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your possession. Lord, you have prepared the place for your dwelling. Lord, your hands have established the sanctuary. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Amen and amen. This is the song that the people of God sang. And we hear them sing part of that song again. And then they're singing actually a new song as well. And as we move along and into a time uh, that is definitively coming, which is the coming judgment of God, we explore there Revelation 15. And so, if you will, turn back there with me, if you will. And the first thing we see here, again, once again, is the wrath of God. It's God's wrath. And by the way, the title of this message is The Final Exodus, Overcoming with Christ. Listen, there's coming a time where we're going to make the final journey from this earth to our heavenly home if you are found in Christ. Amen. That time is coming. That time is coming. It is closer than it's ever been. I know that's kind of cliche a lot of times, but it is closer than it's ever been before. It is closer now than it was for the Israelites when they were in Egyptian captivity, when they were saved by the hand of God. We're even closer to the return of the judgment of God and the wrath of God. And we find there in verse 1 and 2 of chapter 15 again, Then I saw another great and awe-inspiring sign in heaven. The first one you will find in chapter 12 and verse 1. He says, Seven angels with the seven last plagues, for with them God's wrath will be completed. I also saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire. 
And those who had won the victory over the beast, his image and the number of his name, were standing on the sea of glass with harps from God. Then it says they sang the song of God's servant Moses and the song of the Lamb. Listen, when it says here that the, 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 uh, the judgment of God or the wrath of God was going to be completed, what that means is the wrath of God is reaching its goal. Now, the wrath of God will continue because on into Revelation, toward the end of Revelation, we finally see Satan and all of his followers, everyone that followed Satan, all of his demons thrown into the lake of fire. That is God's wrath. And so God's wrath, what that word completed means, is that God's wrath is reaching its goal. And so when this time comes in the history of mankind, we know that the end is coming very soon. That God's ultimate final victory will be seen when he throws Satan into the lake of fire. The wrath of God is a doctrine that the word of God teaches us that cannot be denied or restrained. Listen, no one will restrain the wrath of God from coming to the face of this earth. All we can do is plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. And listen, that's enough. That is enough to save us from the coming wrath of God that we are reading about here and that we've read about previously. In verse 2, we see the wrath of God begin stirring. You remember we read about the sea of glass. That was crystal clear earlier in Revelation. But now we see in verse 2, I also saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire. And those who won the victory over the beast and so on and so forth were standing there. They were standing at the sea of glass with their harps of gold. I bet you didn't know one day you're going to be playing the harp. Amen. One day you're going to be playing the harp. It's kind of not going to be one of them big ones probably that sit on the ground. But it's going to be one of those you hold, kind of like a guitar. We're going to be playing those harps with the beautiful melody of the redeemed of the Lord. In verse 2, we see the sea of glass mixed with fire. We begin to see the stirring wrath of God. Can you imagine, is there anything that might precipitate the stirring wrath of God happening today in our world? <laughs> Is there anything you think that God might be a little bit upset about? Or that God might be readying himself to release his wrath upon the face of this earth? Listen, folks, I don't know about you, but we better wake up. We better lift our eyes to heaven. We better lift our eyes and get ready and prepared to receive those hearts. We better get ready and prepared to bring those that we know to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because his wrath has begun to stir. How the heart of God must be breaking today over the condition of our world. How the heart of God must be breaking today over the condition of our nation. Can I ask you a question today? Is your heart breaking? Is your heart breaking? I've honestly tried to avoid the news. Anybody else? I, I don't want to be one of those that stick my head in the sand, right? But I, I've just been kind of saying, man, I don't need that negativity in my life. I, I don't want to focus on all of that junk. I mean, that's the best way to put it, I think. So I've been kind of staying away from the news other than maybe sneak it in and watch a few little things here and there. But what I see and what I hear and what I see happening in our nation is heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. It's not just heartbreaking because I'm an American and because I love America, but it's heartbreaking because I know that sin is running rampant. That sin is running rampant, that righteousness is no longer something that people are pursuing. People are pursuing wickedness. I see that happening all around. As God's people, they begin to prepare themselves. They are hearing and seeing that God's wrath is about to come upon the face of the earth. And God is about to deliver some more dear saints of God. This is the final exodus. This is the final exodus of the people of God that are going to find their heavenly home. And in verses 2 and following, the people began to sing this song. They began to sing this song. And listen, not only do we see that the wrath of God is stirring. God's wrath is a doctrine that is true that is going to happen. But we also see the people of God. Aren't you glad that even though God's wrath is stirring, we see that the people of God are secured and safe? We see that the people that trust in the Lord are not going to under, undergo the wrath of God. And in verse 2 and through 4, and it talks about this as they sing that song. Look there in the middle of verse 3. 
Great and awe-inspiring are your works. This is the song of the Lamb. Great and awe-inspiring are your works. Lord God, the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations. Lord, who will not fear and glorify your name? Because you alone are holy. For all the nations will come and worship before you because your righteous acts have been revealed. What this is talking about here is those who have overcome. Are there any overcomers in here this morning? Any overcomers in here this morning? Do you want to be an overcomer? Do you want to overcome? Remember when he was talking to the churches as we opened up the book of Revelation way back in March, I think it was, when we first started looking at Revelation. We started looking at the letters to the seven churches, and the Lord says to, to him who overcomes. Remember, he was talking about, listen, you've got to overcome. You've got to be an overcomer. And this is what God is talking about with his people, that they are overcomers. And these last folks will be delivered to their final resting or their final living place not resting place their final living place are overcomers and it says that they overcame the beast they overcame the beast they overcame the image of the beast and they overcame the number of the beast say brother Sean what does that mean it's pretty awesome to think about Revelation 15 scripture opening up 2021 January 10th and how interesting it ties in to today. Something that was written, you know, probably 2,000 years ago. Certainly Exodus way before then. But Revelation written some 2,000 years ago or longer. And here we go. And we're reading about these people that overcome. And they overcome the beast. The beast, remember, is the political machine. You remember that? The beast is the political machine. Now, I don't know about you, but we are seeing the beast in America being unleashed. Amen. I mean, it's some disturbing things that we see in our nation's government. And I'm not taking sides on either way. I'm saying it's disturbing all the way around. Amen? It's disturbing all the way around. And there is coming great pressure from political entities for people to reject Christ. And he's saying, here are people who overcome that. He also says they're overcoming the image. The image of the beast, remember, was the false prophet. Remember, the image of the beast was another person that looked very nice and his words were very eloquent and he had people following after him and 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 turning their backs toward the Lord God and the Bible says that they overcame the image of the beast religious pressure to reject Christ led by the false prophet listen there are things happening that we would never have thought that we would read or see happening in our day when you think about the Catholic Church you see the Pope and some of the things that he has said over the last many years that are shocking to most of us, I'm sure, who would think that would never come from the mouth of, of the leader of the Catholic Church, and yet it has. There's been religious pressure to reject Christ, and it's going to be led by this false prophet. It's coming. It's coming. Not only that, overcame the number of his name. You've seen a lot in the news lately about, you know, getting, you know, numbers or, you know, having uh, your phone, you know, you don't carry cash anymore, Right. And maybe you have your phone, and so now you can hold your phone up to a cash place, and you can, um, you can purchase something. I was looking at, uh, I was watching Facebook the other day. It was funny. You know, our cards have these chips in them now, our debit cards, right? And these chips, all you got to do is hold it up to the reader, and it'll read it. And it was funny. This guy the other day, he was, he was in a convenience store, and so he, he's playing this crank, prank on this clerk. And he takes his debit card, and he puts it, I think he had a turban on, matter of fact. So he puts his, his debit card up in his turban. And he walks up there, he's got some, you know, items, and he places them on the counter, and the clerk rings it up, and the clerk's looking at him, and he's waiting for his payment. And so the next thing you know, the guy's sitting there praying, you know, acting like he's praying before the Lord. And he, he kind of leans over toward the, toward the payment thing, the processor there. He leans over before it, and the next thing you know, a receipt is, is pumping out, right? And so the clerk was standing there in amazement. How did this guy, he's praying, and God paid his bill. God paid for his groceries or whatever it may be. And so that's pretty, y'all get that later. But it was pretty funny to watch that and see that unfolding. But there's ways today that people are using technology and the number of the beast, and it will be great economic pressure. You won't be able to buy. You won't be able to sell unless you take the mark of the beast. So those that remain, the Bible is saying they have overcome the number of his name. They have overcome. If you want to look back to chapter 13, you will find how these topics are introduced in more detail. We've already been there, already passed that, but you might want to make a, a note in your Bible, like I did, I don't remember when this was, but I wrote, see chapter 13, 
uh, above um, verse 2 there. As it talks about being victorious over the beast, over the number, and over the image. You see chapter 13. They overcame the number of his name. And then what happens? They were overcomers, and so they sing the song of the Lamb. They sing the song of the Lamb. Look at this very quickly. They, 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 the way this is written, if you look at the first line, great and awe-inspiring of your, are your works, it goes with the second line, righteous and true are your ways. And then Lord God Almighty, King of all nations, those are attached as well. This is the kind of writing style that we see happening here. And so what is happening is when he says, great and awe-inspiring are your works. What does that mean? What does that mean? Righteous and true are your ways. What does that mean for us? What that means is, is that God's ways are completely perfect. Did you hear me this morning? God's ways are completely right. They are completely perfect. Now listen to me this morning. That doesn't mean that they are not without trouble for us. The right thing to do is always the hard thing to do. Can I get an amen this morning? It's always difficult to do the right thing because, you know, consequences and all those things that come with it. It's always difficult on the front end to do the right thing. But God's ways are completely right. And if God's ways are completely right, then the trouble that we find ourselves in today is for the purpose of the righteousness of God Almighty. What that means is what we're going through today, even though it's trouble and it's difficult and we don't understand it, it's all for the purpose and the plan of God Almighty. Can I get an amen from God's people this morning? Listen, you've got to believe that. You've got to believe that God is righteous, that God is mighty, that God has the best interest of his people in mind. Again, they're not without trouble for us, but they are not without a purpose for God. God has a purpose for every trial, every situation, every circumstance we find ourselves in this side of glory. God has a purpose for it. You say, Brother Sean, what is the purpose? All I know is the purpose is to bring him glory and honor. (laughs) All I know is the purpose is to bring more people to know him as their Lord and Savior. Verse 4 says, Lord, who will not fear and glorify your name? Because you alone are holy For all the nations will come and worship before you because your righteous acts have been revealed. What they're doing here is they're putting God back in his rightful place. I think a lot of times we get things mixed up. We think, well, the the government is who we need to look toward. They're the ones that are going to help us and save us. They're going to get us out of this mess, right? Any amens to that? I doubt it. And so, you know, we're going to get us out of this mess. So we look to government. Or maybe we look to power. Or maybe we look to money. We, we look to see what's in our wallet. Maybe that will get us out of this mess. We look to all of these different ways and things in our lives. And we got things out of order. We might even think, well, the church and coming to church is going to get us out of this mess. No. Coming to church don't get you out of the mess. Coming to church is a great thing. It's a wonderful thing. And you need to do it. But you need to come to church because you know the Savior, because you want to know the Savior, because He's calling you to come. They're putting God in His rightful place in the song. It says, you are holy. You alone are holy. All the nations will come and worship before you because of your righteous acts. Did you know that God is the only holy one? God is the only holy one. There is no one else holy. No one else holy. The Bible says, what does he say? He says, be ye holy as I am holy. He wants us to pursue holiness. And we're made holy and righteous, not of ourselves, but who? But through who? Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. We're made holy and righteous. We're not holy and righteous upon ourselves because of our flesh, but because of what God has done through Jesus Christ. They're singing this song. What a beautiful song. This goes directly against... The song that sang to the beast earlier, they say, who, who will come up against the beast? Who will not worship the beast? That's the, the world saying that. And then this comes in stark contrast with that. This comes in stark contrast with putting our affections and everything we are toward the Lord God, God's people. But then we see God's wrath coming, stirring. We see God's people re- not having to go through that wrath. They're putting God first. They're singing the song of the Lamb. But then we see the glory of God revealed. Once again in the Word of God. Look there in verse 5. After after this I looked at the heavenly sanctuary. The tabernacle of testimony was opened. And out of the sanctuary came seven angels with seven plagues dressed in clean bright linen with gold sashes wrapped around their chest. 
one of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven gold bowls filled with the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. You might think of these bowls more of like a cup that we would use, more like a goblet filled with the over, to overflowing with the wrath of God. It says, Then the sanctuary was filled with smoke from God's glory and from his power, and no one could enter the sanctuary until the seven plagues of the seven angels were revealed. God's glory. It says there about the tabernacle of testimony. You remember in the Old Testament, the tabernacle was the movable worship place for the Israelites. Remember, they were escaped out of Egyptian captivity, but then they couldn't obey God, and so they wandered in the wilderness for so long. And so that God instructed them to build a tabernacle, a place where they could come and worship the Lord. And so it was portable. The, 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 the Levite, the tribe of Levi, were responsible for setting it up and tearing it down as the Lord would move them. And so you remember that tabernacle and then that word there, the tabernacle and the testimony. What is the testimony of God? The testimony of God was found in the law there in the Holy of Holies that was enclosed there in the Ark of the Covenant. And so he's thinking back to this tabernacle. He's seeing this opening up, this image that he's seeing was the tabernacle, the movable worship center that contained the Ten Commandments, the law of God. And so he's seeing this open up. Then he's seeing, he says, he see, begins to see these angels with the seven plagues, the seven bowls, if you will, dressed in this clean and bright linen, gold sashes wrapped around their chest. That reminds you of anybody ever seen that gold sash when you have an Easter cantata? Maybe we can have an Easter cantata, amen? I pray we can. Any amens out there? Well, I hope we can. An Easter cantata, no. Then Jesus comes out, and he's got that white robe, and he's got that gold sash coming across his chest re regarding him as the Holy of Holies and, and the one who can redeem us from our sin, the one who overcame death and sin and hell. And here we see that same holiness being reflected upon these who are going forth by God's own word. It reminds us of the holiness of God's wrath. Some people would say, so you're telling me, Brother Sean, that, that God is going to bring wrath upon the world and a bunch of people are going to die and a bunch of people are going to be sent to hell, that's exactly what's going to happen. The wrath of God is going to happen, but the good news is he hasn't returned yet. I think his wrath is stirring. It hasn't been poured out in these seven bold judgments yet, but I believe it's coming. And so what that means is there's still time for people to trust God, to trust him, to put him first place in their lives so they can know him, so they can be saved from their sin, they can be saved from eternal damnation in a place called hell. The wrath of God is certainly coming, but it's holy. God's wrath is holy. Listen, if God did not, in, if God did not incite his wrath and his judgment upon the world, then what would that make God? That would make God a liar. A liar, somebody that's holy is not a liar. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. When you have, you, when you have judgment, you also, we have love, you have to have judgment. When you have love, when you have the mercy of God, it's got to be coupled with the judgment of God. There would be no need for the love of God, for the love of Jesus who came to this earth, lived a sinless life, died on the cross for our sins, rose again, was buried, rose again on the third day. There would be no need for Christ to have gone to that tomb if there was not judgment that was coming. Jesus Christ died to save us from our sins. God, Jesus Christ died to save us from our sins. And so God's wrath is holy. God's wrath is coming. Look there. It says, verse 8, after the seven angels left the tabernacle. Verse 8 says, Then the sanctuary was filled with smoke from God's glory and from his power. No one could enter the sanctuary until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Which reminds us of the great power of God. The glory and the power of God. How many times the Lord Jesus led the people of Israel. Remember when the tabernacle, when they got ready to move the tabernacle, the glory of God would be a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Remember the glory of God filled the entirety of the tabernacle as John is looking there. Listen, God is still in his glory. God is still waiting to initiate this final, these final acts of his wrath. Do you believe that God is holy today? 
Do you believe that you can trust God today with whatever's going on in your life? Well, I pray you can. Listen, that's what these folks were doing. They overcame. They overcame. They didn't buy into the political machine. They didn't buy into the religious machine. They didn't buy into any of that. What they bought into was that they believed Jesus Christ was the only way. That he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes into the Father except through Jesus Christ. That's what they believe. What do you believe today? What do you believe today? What will happen if we have to, and we're, we're overcoming. I don't know if that means the entirety of Christianity or Christians all over from time, all time, and all space. I'm not sure how that applies. I know it certainly applies to those who are coming to Christ in the last days. But certainly we can see a glimpse of that today that, listen, there's a lot of of pressure upon Christians today. And by the way, that pressure is going to get worse. Do you believe that? That pressure is going to get worse. It's going to come from political pressure. It's going to come from religious pressure. It's going to come from economic pressure. All of those things are, are kind of brewing. We can see that happening. We can see the pressure begin to press in upon us as believers, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so certainly we're going to have to overcome. Amen. We're going to have to stay faithful to what the Lord God has tasked us to do. And that's to live a life set apart unto the purposes of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I pray that you have purpose to do that. I pray that you say, Brother Sean, I'm going to be an overcomer. I'm going to, I'm going to make it to the end. Can I get an amen this morning? So I'm going to be faithful to the end. That doesn't mean we don't fall down. We do fall down. That's why we need one another to help pick us up. We need one another to encourage us, to help us along this very difficult path. We need each other's prayers. We need each other's mercy and love. So today, we see the Lord is coming. The pre- preparation is happening. God's wrath is a biblical doctrine. It will happen. But God's people will be spared from the wrath of God. And so, boy, that's a blessing. One day, God will deliver us. We're going to cross over. We're going to cross over like we read about a moment ago. We're going to cross over, and we're going to be on the other side. We're going to be on the other side of the sea, and we're going to be looking back at, at the enemies of God. We're going to be looking back at Satan and his demons and all those who rejected God. And we're going to be looking back and we're going to be seeing the wrath of God fall upon them. And we're going to sing that song of the Lamb one of these days. Are you ready to sing the song of the Lamb? Well, I am. I'm looking forward to that day. We sing the song of the Lamb. It is going to happen one day. We will stand there at the sea and sing the song of the Lamb. Great. And awe-inspiring are your works, Lord God, the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations. Lord, who will not fear and glorify your name? Because you alone are holy. For all the nations will come and worship before you, because your righteous acts have been revealed. One day, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Have you done that already? Have you already confessed that? I pray you have. If you've not confessed the Lord as your Savior, why not today? Why not today? Why not call upon his name and ask him to come into your life, forgive you of your sin, and so that one day you'll be standing on that seashore with me, looking back at this old world and being so thankful that you did not follow the world, <laughs> being so thankful you did not follow the beast, you did not follow the, 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 the false prophet, that you did not follow after Uh, the political machine you didn't follow after all these things but you followed after Jesus the king of kings and lord of lords I want you to bow your heads with me this morning as we think about this final exodus we see the first exodus in exodus 15 we see the final exodus in exodus I mean in revelation 15 and what a glorious thing that is and I want you to be a part of that I want you to be a part of that song we sing on the seashore, and even if you don't sing here, you'll be singing with me in heaven. And so I look forward to that day because I get to stand there and I say, I told you so. I told you you'd be singing. One of these days, it's going to be awesome. If you don't know Jesus Christ today, won't you call upon his name today and be saved? Say, Brother Sean, how do I do that? You admit that you're a sinner. You admit that there's nothing that you can do to earn your way of salvation because you're, sin- you're sinful. You've done things against God. You've done things against his word. So you admit that. Then you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin because he lived a sinless life. He was the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He went to that cross for you. He died on that cross. He was buried. He rose again on the third day, and he 
ascended into heaven. He's coming back again one day. You believe Jesus and what he's done for you through his blood. Your sins have been covered. Then you confess him as your Savior and Lord today. Say, Lord, I confess you. I make you my Lord. I make you my boss. What that means is I'm going to follow you from this day on. Does that mean, hey, I'm instantly perfect? No, it doesn't. Listen, you don't have to be perfect to come to the Lord Jesus. <laughs> don't wait to get things cleaned up or get things figured out or get things in, in line. Don't wait for that. Come to him now. Come to him now, and he will change you from the inside out your faith and trust in him for us who know the Lord I pray that we be encouraged today by the word of God knowing that we can be overcomers we can overcome all these things the world is throwing at us because we know the king of kings and the lord of lords is on his throne and that's who we serve that's who we follow so I pray we would have the faith that we would trust in the mercy the love of God and his grace days ahead seem to be getting darker and darker but as we see darkest days coming upon us the light of the world shines even brighter and that is Jesus Christ let us lift high his banner let us put him first place in our lives let us get back to worship let us get back to prayer let us get back to loving one another as the day approaches Heavenly Father I pray Lord for those who are here today that need to make decisions Lord, those who are closest to hell, Lord, I pray for their salvation today. Lord, they might be listening, Lord, here on Facebook or online or, Father, maybe in this place, Father, gathered here. Lord, if they're, they're lost today, I pray that they would come to know you. Lord, I pray that you are, you are ministering to their heart right now with a spirit of conviction. Lord, that conviction is befalling them. They know the only thing they can do is turn to you and give their life to you. Lord, I pray they would do that right now in this very moment. Lord, for those of us who are believers, I pray that our focus would be upon you. Lord, that we would know that we could be overcomers. Lord, that we would not get caught up in, Lord, all the wranglings of this world. And, Father, that we would not follow the, the wide path that leads to destruction. But, Lord, our, our attentions will be for, uh, faced toward the narrow path, Lord, that leads to life everlasting. Lord, help us to stay on the right road. And, Lord, help us to worship you. And, Father, just bask in the glory of God. Help us to live for you each day. Lord, if there's other decisions today, I pray, whatever it is, Lord, you speak in so many different ways. Lord, the word of God speaks to all of us differently. Lord, it's no different today. I know you've used your word to speak to all of us. Just, Lord, thank you for that. Lord, as we have this time of invitation, Lord, I pray that we be obedient to you. Lord, that we would do what you're asking us to do. Father, because we love you and because you love us. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. And amen. Would you stand with me this morning? We're going to sing a hymn of invitation, just as I am. Most of you know it. The words will be on the screen, but you probably don't even need them. So focus on what God wants you to do today as we sing together. I'll be here at the front, but the Travis is coming as well. And so if you need to respond in any way today to the message that God has brought to us, then uh, you do that this morning. Let's sing together. Just as I am.
step out if you need to come. Just as I am, don't toss about with many a conflict, many a doubt, findings within and fears this morning and you know our nation needs prayer you know our world needs prayer you know our city needs prayer we need prayer God's people need revival uh, today and the days ahead and those of you that feel like you can I want to invite you to come to the altar we're going to have a time of prayer we're not going to tarry very long but I feel like this is important the Lord impressed it upon my heart that we need to get back to the altar and so if you can come to the altar I encourage you to do that if you cannot come to the altar then there where you are I gather with your family and have a family altar there as we pray together. But you come on those that can and will. You come on to the altar this morning. And we're going to have a time of prayer. And uh, this is going to be our closing time together this morning as we pray together. And so you come and join with me if you're able to today. pray where you are just crying out to him just cry out for repentance of sins that we know that we have committed cry out repenting of the sins that we may not know that we've committed cry out also the Lord just to say Lord the sins of omission the things that we have not done that we know we should be doing that the Lord's commanded us to do as God's people pray that we would be honest with him this morning as we repent of those sins And then as we repent today, I pray that we would um, go before the Lord and uh, just intercede on behalf of those who are lost, those who do not know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we would intercede on their behalf, praying that they would come to know Jesus, that he would use us to see them come to know him, that we would be available to do whatever he's asked us to do. And then that we would just pray for our nation, intercede on behalf of our leaders, those that are coming into power, those that are exiting from power as our president, vice president. We pray for our senators and congressmen and our state leaders and our city leaders. That We would just be real and honest before God and just be telling we know we're in a mess and that we need his help. So you pray there. You ask God to do those things, whatever else God lays on your heart to pray, and I'll close in just a moment. Lord, we come to you now as your people. And Lord, we know that we're far from what you would have us to be. And so, Lord, today we repent, Father, corporately of our sin. Lord, of our sin of complacency for not doing what you would have us to do. Lord, for the sins that we're committing, Lord, things that we know, Father, personally, that, Father, we need just a touch from you. We need healing from you, and so, Lord, we pray that 
Father, you would just take away those things, those desires that we have, Lord, the bad attitudes we may have, or whatever it is, Lord, you would take that away from us, and Lord, give us a new passion, Lord, for the things of God, Lord, to seek after your word, and Father, to seek after your face, and Lord, that we would put you first place in our lives, Lord, just forgive us, Father, where we failed, Lord, where, where we will fail, Lord, help us to recognize, Lord, those actions and attitudes, and and Father, the rebellion that we may have in our lives, Lord, and Father, just bring us back to you. Lord, thank you for forgiving us of our sins. Lord, you say that if we confess our sin, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Lord, today, Lord, your people need cleansing. Lord, today, your people need, Father, your righteousness to fall upon us. So Lord, help us. Lord, reveal those things to us as you will. Lord, help us to be obedient, to respond. Lord, we also, Father, in coming and bowing before you humbly, Lord, we also, Lord, want to intercede on behalf of others. Lord, first of all, we intercede on behalf of the lost, Lord, those who do not know you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, those who are dying, Lord, every single day, and Lord, those who are going to hell because they don't know you as their Lord and Savior. Father, that is, our, that is our command to go and tell. So may we be faithful in that. Or may we steward that well. Or may we tell others about what Jesus has done for us. And may we all be soul winners. He that winneth souls is wise. Or may we all be wise in our ways as we tell others about Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. Or we intercede on behalf of our of our government today. Lord, we pray today for our president, President Trump, Lord, as these last days of his presidency. Lord, we pray, Father, that you just protect him. Lord, keep him from harm's way. Lord, allow him to lead well in these last days. Lord, we also pray, Father, for President Pence and Vice President Pence and pray, Lord, the same prayer for him. We pray you'll protect him, Lord, and even when they leave, Father, the White House, that you would protect them. Lord, continue to work in their lives. Lord, we pray for, Father, our, our incoming president and vice president. Lord, we pray for Joe Biden. Lord, we just pray, Father, that you would just use him the way that you will. Lord, we know that you're in control, Lord, whatever happens, whoever's president, whoever's leading our nation, or the nations, Lord, you have a say-so in that. Lord, we know that it's your will. Father, we may not understand everything, but, Lord, it's your will. And so, Lord, would you just help him, Lord, lead the way he needs to lead. Lord, would you help Kamala Harris, Lord, lead the way she needs to lead? Lord, would you help the cabinet and, Lord, the senators and congressmen and, Lord, all those who are leading our nation, Lord, just to turn their eyes and their ears toward Jesus? Lord, we are going down a road, Lord, that seems to be cutting you out of everything in our lives, Lord, everything, the nation, our nation's fabric, Lord, we've tried to remove you. Lord, there's those who would incite hate and, Father, disunity but Lord we know that you bring Father unity and Lord you bring love so Lord help us to love one another as you've loved us Lord help us to help people to know that we're your disciples because the way we love one another Lord help us to be a witness and a testimony Lord just do a great work in our nation Lord we, we just lay it at your feet Lord we are one step away Father at any given moment from seeing what we understand as our government and, Father, our democracy failing. And so, Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you. But, Father, we know the most important thing is not our democracy. It's not, Lord, our nation, but, Lord, it is you. And, Lord, as we intercede on behalf of those that are in leadership because you've told us to, and that's a command, but, Father, we know, Lord, the most important thing is your kingdom. And so, Lord, help us to build your kingdom. Lord, help us to be about the business of seeing people come to know Christ. Lord, our mission does not change when presidents change. Lord, our mission does not change when laws change. Lord, our mission does not change when persecution comes. Lord, our mission does not change when, when we are, Father, threatened in any way. But Lord, our mission remains the same. Lord, thank you for, thank you for your mission to come to this earth and to live a sinless life in the midst of this sinful world and then Lord to, to remain faithful because you are God 
And then, Lord, to go to the cross and, and die on the cross for our sins. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness to do that. Lord, you didn't have to do it. But you did it because of your love. Your love compelled you to do it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Lord God, thank you. Lord, that you did not give up. Lord, that you were an overcomer. That you saw what, what God the Father had sent you to do. You saw it to the very end. And in the end, Lord Jesus, you were glorified through your glorious resurrection and you're alive today. Lord Jesus, thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for your kingdom. Lord, we thank you that we don't have to worry about, Father, this world being our final home because we have another home that you've promised us. And Lord, help us to look for that, toward that. Lord, help us to sing the song of the Lamb even today as we prepare for that glorious day in heaven when we're joined with you once again. Lord, I thank you for my church. Lord, I thank you for this church family, First Baptist Church Kenton. Lord, we're um, a bunch of imperfect folks, Lord, just seeking to, to, to bring you glory and Father and honor. And sometimes we miss the mark, but Lord, we want to hit the mark. Lord, we want to do what you're asking us to do. So Lord, just show us, just reveal it to us. Lord, bring a spirit of unity, Lord, among this body, Lord, that we might not, not have ever seen ever before. But Lord, something that only you can do. And so Lord, we need it today. We need it so desperately. Lord, I thank you for each one gathered here today. Lord, I love them. Lord, I know you love them more than anything. Lord, help us to love one another that way. Lord, the way that you love us. Lord, unselfishly and with uh, just a great recognition of your love for us. Lord, as we depart from here, Lord, in a spirit of prayer here in just a moment. Lord, help us not forget, Lord, today the message. Lord, this time of prayer. Father, help us to just continue to trust in you. Lord, build our faith each day. Lord, in these days, all we can do is turn to you. And Father, help us to be obedient in that. So Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Lord, thank you for calling us. Lord, thank you for those you'll save, Lord, in the days to come. Lord, thank you for the things you will do in the days to come. Even though the days look very dark, Lord, we know that you will shine brightly in the darkness. And thank you so much for that. Lord, we love you, and we just give you all that we've done here today. Lord, we give it to you for your glory and for your praise and for your honor. Lord, just bring us, restore unto us, Lord, the joy of your salvation. And Lord, we pray these things today, and we ask them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining in prayer today. As we get ready to leave, I just want to remain in a spirit of prayer. And um, if you have it already today, don't forget the way we're giving our tithes and offerings is just drop your tithe in the box as you leave this morning. And we'll get that taken care of for you. And uh, again, just want to leave in a spirit of prayer today. So I'm just going to dismiss you today. And uh, be looking for announcements and things to come your way via email, via text messages. We love you. Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, God bless you. We'll be seeing you. And uh, we look forward to next Sunday when we gather together again. All right? Love you guys. Y'all have a good day. See you later.